Hi guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics. Uh, this will be a quick video. Uh, I have some good news and some bad news. Uh, the bad news being that I won't be able to make any videos next week. Um, but the good news is the reason I can't make any videos is because I am participating in NASA's Rock On rocket um, payload building program. Uh, where next week I will uh, build a science payload uh, at Wallops Island, Virginia. And we're going to build it up onto a sounding rocket. And then later on in the week, we're going to launch the sounding rocket from one of these launch pads. We're going to be allowed to put uh, something of our own, hopefully, on the rocket so that we can say we have a prized possession that visited space. It's expected to go to 120 kilometers, which is quite high. That's about this high. And uh, then it's going to re-enter and land uh, off the Atlantic Ocean, or rather off the East Coast in the Atlantic Ocean. So, um, I am super excited for that. And so what I've prepared is a demonstration which sort of showcases the sounding rocket in orbiter. Now, um, one bit of complaint. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed to see that I searched the orbiter hangar and I did not find any sort of sounding rockets in uh, the orbiter hangar, which is a little bit disturbing. Uh, I thought there would be more modders apparently making uh, sounding rockets, but apparently I was not able to find one. So what we're going to do instead is going to have we're going to have to um, make do. So what I have here is a fictional shuttlecraft here, shuttle PB, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to accelerate towards Wallops Island. We're actually at. Uh, Dulles International Airport, um, actually right next to Washington. In fact, I think we're going to drive, yeah, we're going to drive through Washington to get to Wallops Island. So basically, what I'm going to do is because there's there's not one rocket in Orbiter that has a thruster powerful enough to accelerate, these rockets accelerate at 30 Gs. So the only way to properly simulate it is by accelerating from the ground. So what I'm going to do 10, 9, is 8, has started. fly towards Wallops Island. And I'm not going to turn or anything. I'm going to accelerate straight towards Wallops Island. And uh, when I reach Wallops Island, uh, hopefully we'll be ready to pitch up. So, uh, this rocket will uh, be reaching a maximum speed. I'm going to accelerate time there so that we can go past. Uh, I think we've gone past Washington already. Yes, there's Wallops Island there. Uh, so, what I'm doing now is accelerating time forward uh, so that... Wow, this is actually going to be really close, but I think we're going to get up to speed. The rocket will reach a maximum speed of uh, 1,300 meters per second. So my plan is to get that over Wallops Island, and then we're going to turn straight up and then out of the atmosphere, and the rest of the flight will be like a sounding rocket. So uh, hopefully we'll get up to speed by the time we get to Wallops. Uh, here we are right now flying over it, and we're almost there. So I'm going to wait for us to go over Wallops, and then once we get to it, we're going to uh, pitch up and out of the atmosphere. Perfect timing. Okay, so now we're going to, oh shoot, don't want to do that. Very slowly now, we're going to simulate a rocket launch by pitching up and out of the atmosphere. Okay? We're going to pitch up to about 85 degrees. And we're going to wait for our apogee to get to um, 120 kilometers before I cut the engines. 
Okay, so there's about 85 degrees. Okay, come on, 120, 120, 120. Okay, right there. So we're in a ballistic flight path now. If we were on board the real sounding rocket, it is two stages. The first stage is um, five seconds, I believe, and the second stage is 25 seconds. So uh, we've already, we would have already accelerated to this and the rocket would have been out of fuel um, by 30,000 feet. So we would actually already have an apogee. But somebody, or rather no one, created a rocket. Um, but anyway, we're in the low reaches of space now. So if I'm lucky, I'm actually going to have uh, science data from this so we'll be able to tell um, all of this stuff on the surface. Uh, I was told that we would be able to we've just hit a hundred kilometers. I was told that we would be able to have uh, a pressure reading on the craft. I'm pitching over now to prepare for re-entry. We're going to have a temperature sensor and a uh, humidity gyro, which is used to show where you are. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, accelerometers, so that we can actually integrate the data and figure out what the speed is. And uh, I'll have a special, as long as everything goes to plan, I'll have a special piece of my own, a uh, possession that has actually flown this high into space, which is amazing. I'm super excited. Uh, we can now see all the way to Toronto, to the north, and to the south we can see down to northern Florida. Okay, this is Apogee. Any moment now? Okay, I'm going to take a moment to pause now. This is the highest point of the sounding rocket's uh, orbit, if you want to call it that. We're in space, but we're not... Um, actually, uh, yes, we're above 120 kilometers, so we're in space according to every definition. So, uh, this is it, as high as it's going to go. And uh, from here, uh, it's on down. The rocket will re-enter, and then parachutes will deploy. So I'm going to go ahead and continue now. And now we're going to begin the process of falling towards the Atlantic Ocean. Meanwhile, I can take a look at our object info, and we can see how accurate Orbiter is with real life, in that the pressure is... Um, 0 0.0025 Pascal. So, uh, when I get the science, when we get the science data back from the rocket, we'll be able to read it and and I can compare it with Orbiter and say, well, how close is Orbiter's uh, simulation of Earth's atmosphere? I'll be able to get a real reading from a craft that actually flew at that altitude and we can actually tell, is this accurate? Was it in fact 0 0.0025 Pascal at 115 kilometers? So the rocket falls just as fast as it went up. Uh, so we're now going to begin the process of re-entering and the re-entry is very fast. So what I'm going to do is um, do a hyper pitch maneuver, which in real life would destroy uh, this shuttle PB, but that's going to simulate the parachute opening. Let's just make sure that we're aligned with our. Where is the velocity vector? There it is. Okay. And uh, re entry is coming up very quickly. So this will start going crazy high. And we're re-entering. 
Actually, hang on, not yet. I was reading the wrong acceleration. Okay, there's the atmosphere. 100,000 feet in altitude. 80,000 feet in altitude. Okay, now we're re-entering. 75,000 feet. 50,000 feet. 30,000 feet. Okay, uh, 25. Now we're going to simulate the parachutes opening. So we're slowing down now. That isn't exactly what I expected, but uh, there we go. Okay, so basically what I did with those uh, pitch maneuvers was slow the craft down. That would have been the equivalent of the parachute opening. And you are clear uh, to now land. it just drifts down to the Atlantic Ocean. 1,500. 1,000. 500, 400, 300, okay. 200, 100, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Okay, so this would be splashdown now in the Atlantic Ocean. Let's go ahead and stop the thing because it shouldn't do that. Uh, so, yep, here's the Atlantic Ocean. So it would be uh, bobbing up and down in the waves. And we're... Um, Let's see how far downrange we are. We should be able to figure it out from Wallops Island. Um, okay, it looks like we're 206 kilometers downrange, so we're a little bit off. Um, the Terrier improved Orion, which is the rocket, the sounding rocket that uh, is going to be flown, is expected to go 96 kilometers downrange. So that's less than half the distance out uh, that we've gone. But anyway, so here, uh, we'd basically wait for a boat. A boat would pick up the payload and bring it back to Wallops Island for analysis. Uh, for more information on the Rock On program, you can go to the NASA website or um, go to the Colorado Space Grant Consortium Rock On website. Uh, I highly recommend it if, you, if you're into rocket science. Um, it's expensive, so can only really go if, if you go to a college that uh, can support sending you uh, to it and basically you, you get you get selected from your college your college will get a number of slots and will you have to um, either compete for slots or volunteer depending on how many people are going uh, and that's basically it so I will see you guys in a week or two uh, and hopefully then I will be able to share with you the real data from space. I will bring, well, I hope to bring real data taken in space. And I might even show you a picture of the piece of Lego that was able to be flown in space, 120 kilometers as seen in this video. So this has been Dr. Aeronautics, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.